We're all blessed to be here in the house of the Lord one more day. Amen. Does everybody get up on our feet this beautiful, beautiful, rainy, cold morning? And let's praise our one and only true King. Amen. I don't know about you guys, but I know that my God, nothing is impossible for him. Amen. Can I get an amen to that? We know that God, there is nothing impossible for our God. Amen. Come on, come on.
Amen? He continues to do miracles. He continues to show us that he can do victories through any kind of circumstances. Amen? We believe in you, God. Nothing is impossible for you, Jesus. Nothing is impossible for you. Amen? Please, there's the church saying, the woman may be formidable,
We're going to have announcements at the very end of the service today. You can hear my wonderful voice instead of our normal voice that we have. So who's excited to wake up to the cold weather and the rain this morning? <laughs> it's only a few times a year. 
normally hot, humid. But this is also part of God's creation, so there's got to be a purpose for the cold and the, and the rain, right? <laughs> so, praise God. Thank you to everybody uh, who is watching online today. Um, pray that you would like it, share it, make your comments, uh, share, do your part in sharing the gospel by sharing with all your family and friends. And to everybody that is here with us today, look to somebody next to you and say, welcome to Day Spring. It's a beautiful day, it truly is, to rejoice in the mighty Lord, the wonderful Savior Jesus Christ that we have. Amen. We're about a week into 2021, actually a week and a half, and so I hope that your 2021 is better than 2021. I hope it is, and if it's not, just hold on because it's going to get better, amen? Please join me in preaching and saying amen, hallelujah, if you want to give some praise and encouragement, then do that. If the Lord's speaking to you, then by all means, please join in on it. So again, thank you for being with us today. I got a couple of scriptures for everybody, but we're going to continue with this um, unshakable series. And the title of today's message is, What Are You Thinking? And you can take this a couple different ways. What are you thinking? Or what are you thinking? Let's go with a second one for today. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? What we think about most in our heart is who we are. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. This is the main scripture for today's message. Proverbs 23, verse 7. Please take notes, comments. You can go back and research the scriptures that we talk about. But it says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. What you think about in your heart is who you are. If you think of evil things, then that's what you are. If you think good things, then that's what you are. If you think godly things, then that's what you are. If you think righteous things, then that's what you are. But as you think in your heart, so is he. I'm like, hold on a second, but how do I think in my heart? Does my heart have a mind? Does my, does my brain ha have a heart? I mean, what is the deal with this? I don't really understand that. Heart, let's talk about these, let's talk about these two things. First of all, your heart is an organ, right? It pumps blood throughout your system. But what's inside of your heart is the essence of who you are. See, blood flows from the heart, right, to the rest of your body. The essence of who you are flows out of you, who you truly are. Everywhere that you are, it flows out what's in your heart. What about your brain and your mind? Are those the same thing? No, they're two different things. Your brain is soft tissue. For some people, it's softer than others. Nobody? No drummer? Da -da -da no? Okay. I just do my own jokes. All right. But for the brain, it's a soft tissue. It's different from your mind. The brain is the center of your nervous system, right? It tells your limbs and things how to move and all that stuff. Now, so when you, we talked about the brain and the heart being organs. So then what is your mind? And how do we get an unshakable mind? Your mind is where you make choices in your life. Your mind is where you have your thoughts, your emotions come from your mind. This is where they talk about your heart and your mind. And you store your experiences in your mind. That's how you're able to remember things. So you kind of understand the difference? Just in case you're not sure, let's talk about the example of church. When someone says, I'm going to church, they have one of two thoughts. I'm going to the church building or I'm going with my brothers and sisters. Both are right. Both of the church, but the church building itself would be like the brain, okay? The inside, the people, that'd be like your mind. Hope this is making more sense here. The church building is physical. It's where we meet. The people, that's where the people's thoughts and emotions come into play. That's where people's experiences are. When I hear people inside the church talking about experiences or giving advice you see that's the part of the church that I'm talking about today and that's the part brothers and sisters of our mind the inside of our mind not just the brain but also the heart that must be unshakable I hope it starts making more sense as we get along so it's easy to confuse these things but as believers we must know the difference there is a difference between your mind 
and your brain. There is a difference between your heart and your mind. There is a difference, but it's all wrapped up and are all connected. Your mind is formed by what you choose to let into your mind. These are choices that you have. If you let junk come in, then junk is stored there, and guess what's going to come out? Junk. There's nothing good going to come out of you storing junk inside your mind and inside your heart. It won't happen. So when I'm talking about your mind for the rest of this message, I want you to think those are the things that you're storing inside of your brain and your heart. That's your mind. Your thoughts, your experiences, your emotions. Okay, you got it? So when I talk about mind, we need an unshakable mind. We need unshakable thoughts, unshakable emotions, and unshakable experiences. Are you with me now on this? Is it making more sense, right? The inside of where we are. Too many of God's people right now, today's world, are choosing sinful minds. So let's go to our second scripture for today. It's in Romans chapter 8, verse 6. It says, So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting, now when I, go to, when I say the word letting, that means choosing. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Letting it. When you let something happen, you are choosing to let it happen. So what happens and what goes into your mind is a choice. Are you guys with me on this? Can I get an amen if you're understanding me so far? Okay, good, good. So we're getting it there. So if you let your sinful nature, which we all are born with a sinful nature, control your life, if you let it control your mind, what's going to come out of it? Sin. But if you let the Spirit control your mind... If you let the Spirit control your life, what comes out? He says, the Word of God says, life and peace. Amen. People want peace. We've been talking about this a lot over the last few months. Peace, peace, peace. Why? It's because the world is in so much chaos and turmoil. You can just turn on the news and see everything that's happening. And when we let our sinful nature control our minds, then it leads to death. Well, what kind of death does it lead to? Yes, it can send you to the grave. Absolutely. You can physically die from those things. But it also leads to the death of relationships. It can lead to death of families, death of careers, death of jobs, death of a sane mind and stable emotions. Are you getting me? So death of all of these things. But a spiritual mind has life. That means the life that God intended for you to have and you have it with peace. You can only have peace if you know what you're standing on. You can only have peace, brothers and sisters, if you are unshakable. Do you want peace? Do you want to be unshakable? Man, then take notes on these here because if people choose a spiritual mind, what happens is you sin a whole lot less. We are going to sin. We're in this flesh, right? We, we have our moments of weakness. Even Jesus looked at Peter, John, and James when he was praying in the garden and said, Man, can't you just stay awake with me one hour and pray? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So, yes, your flesh is weak. I'm not giving you a license to sin. That's not what Jesus is doing. But Jesus understands that we're going to because we're weak. But when your mind is led by the spirit, you sin a whole lot less, a whole lot less. And then when you do sin, you turn and repent. And that's what we're supposed to do as Christians. If we think that we have to live a spotless life, a sinless life, man, we're going to fail and we're going to give up. Listen, when you're on a diet and you start one of these diets where you just eat, drink carrot juice and beets all day long. And you do that for 30 days straight. I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to quit that diet. I don't like either one of those things. I like me some steak. I love me some bread. <laughs> I love ice cream. There's all these things. So I have to give myself permission at least once or twice a week to do those things, to eat those things. See, because I have something to look forward to. And then when I do it, all I do is just work out harder, right? There's a way to get around that. We'll talk about the body more next week. But I want you to understand the reason I'm saying all this stuff is because what are you putting into your mind? What are you telling yourself it's okay to do? Because whatever you put in is what's going to come out. There are three things that happen when you choose a mind that is controlled by the Spirit. The first thing is you choose to learn the truth. Number one, write this down. You choose to learn the truth when your mind is controlled by the Spirit. Has anybody here ever felt uncomfortable? 
excuse me, confused, lost? Ever felt hopeless? You ever felt too far gone, maybe, that God can control you? So if you choose to learn the truth, if you ever choose to learn the truth, then God will change the way that you think and what's in your mind. And why not choose to learn from the greatest teacher of all time, Jesus? He is absolutely the greatest teacher of all time. There is no greater teacher. The master communicator, the master, the rabbi that they call him, he is the greatest teacher of all time. So listen to this. This is what we see. This is not Jesus' words. This is Paul's. But remember, Paul was, by the Holy Spirit, writing these things. He wrote this letter to the Ephesians in chapter 4. So follow along with me. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 24 Paul is saying this. He says, with the Lord's authority, I say this. Whose authority? The Lord's authority. So it's not his own. It's not his experiences. It's not his thoughts. It's the Lord's thoughts. Here we go. He says, no, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. I don't know about you guys before I move on to the next one, man, but there's many times I felt confused in my life. But when I go to God's word... And I pray about this and I meditate. Man, that confusion goes away. But I have to choose to pick this up and not pick up something else. You can look on YouTube. You can look on Facebook. You can look on all the different social media platforms or the Internet and find stuff out there. Psychology Today and all that stuff, man. But I got to tell you, when you study, if you were to ever study all the greatest leaders in the history of the world, that means people who were leaders and they teach leadership, Whether they know it or not, whether they're believers or not, they get their leadership principles from Jesus Christ and the Word of God. Just look back on what their philosophies and what their thoughts are based on, and it's based on the teachings of Jesus. So why should we go anywhere else, right? So whenever you feel hopelessly confused, why don't you go to the one who has no confusion? God is not the author of confusion. So let's go to Jesus' words. Let's continue on. In verse 18, it says, he's talking about the Gentiles. They're hopelessly confused. Verse 18, their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives them because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. We're going to stop again. I'm going to talk a lot about these verses before we continue. Closed my mind and hardened my heart. Well, God took my my mother away from me, so I don't want to follow him no more. That's hardening your heart. That's looking at all creation and saying, well, no, there must, you know, it could have just happened like this from that flash, the big boom theory, right? For all you atheists out there that are watching and people who question whether or not God is real, how can something come from nothing? It's not possible. Pastor Adrian, that's his first question when he was talking about evangelism, coming back from Christ from the nations, he would talk about how could something come from nothing? It can't. So God is real, you see, but if your mind is closed, you won't see that. You'll say, well, no, there has to be something else. There has to be something else. We're going to continue on. Verse 19, it says, they have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. They have no sense of shame. You see people that go on Twitter and just start throwing all their dirty laundry out there? They don't care what's happening. They don't, there's no shame. They... God's word can clearly say that what you're doing is wrong, but they have no shame. They just, or somebody does something and they go tell all their friends about it. They know it's sinful, but they're telling all their friends, but they have no sense of shame. This is what Paul is telling us right here. He's saying these people have no sense of shame. They have, uh, they live for lustful pleasures and they eagerly practice every kind of impurity. Verse 20. Now he's addressing us. He says, but, he said, but that isn't what you learned about Christ. Hold on a second. In order to learn something that's in your mind. It's here in your heart and in your brain. This is where it's stored. How are you choosing to learn about Christ? Because if you have, then impurity, sinful living, lustful things, living in darkness, hardening your hearts, having no sense, that's not what you learned from Christ. Verse 21, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupt by lust and deception. Are you following me here? 
you can throw this stuff off when you fill your mind with Christ, when you're learning. Now listen, if somebody's telling, if, if right now you're saying this is too hard, I don't understand this. Understand today I'm preaching about the mind. You may not get up and start running around the church or fall down on your face weeping after this message today. Every message has a life of its own. And the life of the message today is going to force you to think about what are you thinking about. What are you thinking about? Anybody can cry for a minute. Anybody can cry for an hour. But you're with your thoughts all day long. I want to challenge you And what are you thinking in your mind and in your heart today. So follow me here. Verse 23, it says, instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and your attitude. Man, put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. We were created to be like God. Not to be God, but to be Christ-like. And when we are Christ-like, we are unshakable. Nothing could shake Jesus from the, his purpose and his calling. Nothing. The enemy tried for 40 days and 40 nights. Couldn't get him. The Pharisees and Sadducees tried. They couldn't get him. The evil spirits that he cast out tried, but they couldn't do it. Even his own disciples, he had to look to Peter and say, Get thee behind me, Satan. Try to move him off of his purpose. But nothing. Jesus was unshakable. Brothers and sisters, you also can be unshakable. But you have to fill your mind with the right things. The truth of God's word. If you fill it with anything else, you will be confused. There's no other way around it. If you want to study all of the other religions, and you study them more or just as much as you study Christianity, you will be confused. I've said this before over and over again, but when agents are taught... They work for the government. When they're taught about counterfeit money, they only look at real authentic money, how it feels, how it smells, how it tastes. So as soon as they touch a fake dollar bill, they know that it's fake. But they don't go and study all those fake ones. They study the real deal. This is the real deal. Right here. Amen. Praise God. So renew your thoughts and your attitudes. This also gives you hope because if you've fallen away from God... You can go and renew it again. You renew your driver's license. You renew your vehicle inspection. You renew your insurance. Well, then why can't you renew your thoughts and your mind? You can. The Word of God is always open for you, and it's always loving, and it's ready to show you. It's ready to teach you. Amen? Amen? How do you put things in your mind? You choose. You choose to fill your mind with God's Word. If you fill your minds with God's word, this is what's going to happen. Let me just show you some differences here. A mind ruled by intellect, meaning your intelligence, your education, your intellect. A a mind ruled by that says, well, if God is real, why can't I see him? A mind ruled by the Spirit says, God is real. I see him everywhere. (laughs) Some of you shouldn't even be alive today. Some of you have family members that shouldn't be alive today. Some of you have jobs and spouses and kids that you shouldn't have. That right there is God everywhere. It's God. You say, well, how come I can't touch him? Go touch your person that you love the most. That love is God. It says God is love. If you know God, you know love. Well, there it is, man, right there. How about this? You go out to the parking lot and you actually get into a car. God has given you a way to get here. Touch your lungs. Are you breathing? God is everywhere. But an intellect, an intellectual will say, well, I can't touch him. I can't feel him. An intellectual says, I can't ask him any questions. A mind by the Spirit says, yes, you can. And here's the answers right here. Right? Be guided by the Spirit. A mind ruled by the intellect says, you know what? It doesn't make sense. How could the Red Sea have parted and millions of people crossed? How could the cross be the forgiveness of my sins? That's what a person ruled by the intellect says. But a person ruled by the Spirit says, I live by faith and not by sight. I don't worry because I trust God. See the difference? The mind ruled by the Spirit, by the way, is not going to be stressed out, doing a bunch of crazy things. It's not going to be worried, which leads us to number two. The third thing that happens when you're ruled by the Spirit is that you choose to stop worrying and start living. Anybody ready to stop worrying and start living? 
when we're worrying, see, worry is an emotion. And we all have emotions. God created emotion, of course. But we're not supposed to be ruled by our emotions. They're just one of the things that's a part of us. They're just one of the parts of our mind. If you are controlled by your emotions, guess what you are? You're unstable. And if you're ruled by your emotions, you're sinning. If anybody who has little kids, a two- or three-year-old can throw temper tantrums. Unfortunately, sometimes those two-year-olds grow up to be 22-year-olds that still throw temper tantrums. 32-year-olds, 42-year-olds, 62-year-olds that still throw temper tantrums. They're ruled by their emotions. At some point, brothers and sisters, we've got to get out of that emotional phase. Yes, they are a part of who we are. Jesus wept. So yes, emotions are a part of it. But it doesn't say in every chapter of every gospel that Jesus was walking around weeping and crying. So we don't have to be like that. Is there a time? Absolutely. Is it every day, all day long? No. Listen to this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. It says this here. Paul tells us, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then, everybody say that with me. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Wow. Praise God. Man, I want him to guard me. I want that protection. See, sometimes emotionally we feel insecure. We don't feel safe. But when we have a mind of the spirit, man, he guards us. He guards your mind and he guards your heart. And guess what, man? You're his child. He's going to protect you. He is protecting you. He is guarding you. Do you want this? Do you want this type of life? Then you must choose to have a mind that's led by the spirit, a spiritual mind. Choose to think about Christ and you will then begin to experience his peace. You will experience safety. How? Because you are focusing on reading God's word. You see, how can I talk about the mind, intellect, intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge and not talk about the word of God? The word of God is all of those things plus a whole lot more. You cannot get to know God. You will not feel peace. You will not have a godly life if you do not pick this up and read it. I'm not talking about reading the outside, because I could read the outside. It has my name engraved on it. I could read the, where it was printed. I'm talking about reading the inside, like the inside of your brain and your mind, or your heart is your mind. You must pick it up and read the inside, brothers and sisters. Are you reading the inside of it? Because if you read the inside of it, you're going to have a mind that is then controlled by God, and you're going to have a mind that is guarded by God. Man, I want that. Because left to myself, my mind will go all over the place. There are times this last year in 2020, I felt like I was going crazy. Literally going crazy. I said, I'm going insane with all the stuff that's going on around me, with everything that's happening. What's happening, God? I had to go to God's word so he could tell me who I was and where I'm supposed to be thinking. Because left to myself, man, I could watch news for four hours. And guess what you start becoming? The same people that are panicking on the news. You become a news reporter. You know this? Have you ever seen this? You you could pick up your own mic, a hairbrush, and you start saying, yes, blah, 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 blah. You start rattling off everything you heard on the news. You've now become an unpaid news reporter for Fox 26 News, and you don't even know it. You ain't even getting paid for it. What the heck is the point of that? That is going to lead you nowhere. And nobody's even going to put you on TV. But if you start picking this up and you start saying what this word says, then guess what, man? You have the ability to change somebody's life. You have the ability to introduce them to Jesus Christ, the Savior of all things and everyone. You have the ability to then change what you have inside of your mind so that what comes out of you is godly instead of sinful. Choose, brothers and sisters, to stop worrying and instead start living. Focus on reading God's word. Look at Philippians 4, verse 8. It says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. You see, 
your mind is what thinks about these things. The only one that's all of those things is Jesus. So if your mind is focused on him, you say, well, how can I focus on Jesus? I got to work. I got to eat. I got to clean. I got to cook. Of course you do. God understands that. He's not telling you to put your wife aside and your job aside and only think about him. He's telling you to think about him while you're doing these things. Well, how can I do that? You can pray to him, talk to him while you're working. I've been in the parking lot before cleaning this up for days, man, and I'm just singing to him. I say, man, God, you're so great. Thank you for helping me here. Looking up and say, man, it's a beautiful day. It didn't take away from me working. I didn't have to stop for 30 minutes to talk to God. I could do it while I'm working. So can you. Can you cook while you're thinking about God? Yes, you can. Think about him. Think about your day. If you start cooking dinner at the end of the day, man, you've had a long day and it's been full of challenges. Well, then start thinking and say, you know what, God, man, you got me here today to cook. And here I am cooking spaghetti or making some steaks. Thank you, Lord, that you gave me money to buy food. What are you thinking about? Put him in and he starts coming out. The only one that's worthy of that is Jesus. Now, let me show you a person that's ruled by their emotions versus somebody who's ruled by the spirit. As somebody who's ruled by their emotions, they say things like, man, I don't like them or I hate them. A person ruled by their emotions says that. A person ruled by the Spirit says this. Jesus said, love your neighbor and pray for your enemy. Man, okay, Jesus, you have an answer for everything, don't you? Yes, he does. He's God. And he has the answers right here, man. <laughs> Another person that's ruled by their emotions, they say, man, I don't feel like God loves me. I really don't think he forgives me. But a person ruled by the Spirit remembers John three sixteen for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. A person ruled by the Spirit will answer those thoughts, those temptations, that negativity that comes in with God's word. Well, how do I know God's word? You have to start memorizing it. But in order to memorize it, you have to read it. You have to study it. Listen, if, by, if last year ended and you don't even have one scripture memorized, then make a goal this year for yourself to memorize at least one scripture? If you knew five scriptures, then do ten this year. Get a scripture that's yours. Man, I've got a scripture that tells me about how much I love my wife and how she's a gift to me. i got a scripture when I feel insecure and I don't feel good enough. i got a scripture when I start questioning things and I think my, we- my faith is weak. i got questions when I feel, it- I, mean, scri- I say questions, I meant scriptures. i got scriptures when I feel uh, impatient or when I feel frustrated. I've got those scriptures because I need those scriptures because his word is life. I fill my mind with them so that I can say them to my situation. Are you doing that? Because if all of you are saying is let go, let God, that's not in the word of God. It's not. But Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God is in the word of God. The enemy ain't going to run at let go, let God. But he will run when I say, when he says, when I tell him, be still. Right? When I say those words, when I say the Lord is, is my deliverer, the Lord is my all things. When he says, I, I mean, whatever the word of God says, when you say the scripture to him, then he'll run. But when you say your own words, he's going to laugh at you. You ain't got nothing for me. God's word is powerful. Fill your mind with his word. You understanding me so far? This leads us to number three. The third thing is to choose to forget your sin and think about your salvation. That's a struggle, brothers and sisters. Because we live with our minds and our feelings every day. Sometimes you can watch a movie, hear a song, or a situation comes up that reminds you of something you did that you're ashamed of. And maybe it's only something that you and God know about. So then you start thinking about it and dwelling on it. I'm guilty of that, man. I've done that before. I'm like, man, how could I have done that? How could I have said that? Why did I do that so long ago? Lord, did you really forgive me for that? You know, I mean, you know, I mean, start asking those questions, right? And I don't know if you're like that. If you're not like that, man, praise God that you're not like that. But unfortunately, my memory still is very active, so old stuff comes back. And I start thinking, okay, Lord, did I just, am I not delivered from that? Did I not deal with that? I have to remind myself, though, that I am saved. I have to remind myself that he died for me on that cross. 
I have to remind myself where I'm going and that he loves me in spite of all of those things that I've done. What do your thoughts remind you of? Do your memories tell you things like you're not forgiven or you sin too, your sins are too hard, too great? I don't know if you've ever been there, but maybe it was that way when you were first a believer. You thought, well, I, I know I gave my life to the Lord, but did he really forgive everything or just the big things? What about the little things? You know what? To God, everything is important. The little things and the big things. So maybe your mind is telling you all of this stuff, and maybe you just you fight with yourself all day long. I know that I fight with myself all day long sometimes. So let's go to God's Word, and let's see what God's Word says about this. In Romans chapter 7, verses 22 through 25, Paul is saying this. Look, I love God's law with all my heart. Some of you feel like this, by the way. You might feel exactly like what I'm about to read. Verse 23 says, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. I'm going to stop there for a second. This is what I was just talking about. There is a war for your mind. That's your brain and your heart. Your mind. Because if the enemy and the world can control your mind, it's got the rest of you and it's got your future. And if you're a parent, it's got your kids. And if your grandparent has got even down to your grandkids, it's got everything if it's got your mind. So there is a war. When you decide, when you say, man, I give my life to Jesus, and you start committing yourself to him, to follow him, the war will come. The war begins. Before that point, you might have had struggles, but honestly, the enemy is not afraid of you until you give your life to the Lord. So then the war begins. It's a spiritual battle, which we'll talk more about in a few more weeks. But it's a spiritual battle that is within you. You might look and say, well, there's around me, yes, but it starts right here. And it's controlled right here in your mind. So listen what Paul says in verse 24. He says, oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? The great apostle Paul still feels miserable about the things that he thinks, about past sins, about the things that he remembers. Can anybody relate with him? Sometimes we ask ourselves, man, how could I do that? What was I thinking? I can't believe I did that, man. What? And then maybe start blaming other people. Why did my parents raise me like this to be like that? Why did that person have to... Do this and or offer me this or give. I mean, why? You start blaming other people, but man, we can't blame other people. This is your walk with Christ. You are responsible for your salvation with fear and trembling, the word says. You are responsible. So we start blaming other people, but we can't. We can't. But there is an answer to our problem. There is an answer to that war that's within inside of us, and it's in verse 25. It says, thank God the answer is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Man. So you see, it is not my mind that I really want to, excuse me, it is not my mind. Excuse me, it is, <laughs> so you see is how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. But we go back to the beginning of that scripture. The answer is Jesus this is how your mind becomes unshakable. Your mind's going to be weak. Your body's going to be weak. Your soul is going to be weak. But Jesus is never weak. And you must fill him, your mind, with this, with him, so that you can be unshakable. Man, I love it when people send me text messages and ask me, what does this scripture mean? Man, a dear friend of mine sent me about four different scriptures this week. Maybe it was more than that. And I'm thankful. I look at this and I say, boy, they're really getting into the word of God. They wouldn't understand what this means, and they're texting me, and I'm texting back, and we're like, man, I'm hoping I'm helping. But that's somebody who's getting deep into God's word. He might look at the person and say, man, but maybe they've been a believer for, you know, 20 years. Hey, my, it doesn't matter. 20 years is nothing to the Lord. If you say, man, I should know this by now, man, get rid of that. That's pride. Don't worry about that. God knows exactly where you are when you're there. He knows. And he's not throwing you away. So if you have questions, ask. See, that feeds your mind. You understand? You're asking, what does the answer go? In your mind. Where does it come out? In your life. So start asking. Keep asking. 
I understand that Jesus is the answer because he is the word. So when you look at a person, when we look at this, we say, I was, the answer was you know, to forget about your sin and think about your salvation. That's, your experiences can hold you back from that. So a person that's ruled by their experiences, this is what they say. Well, it's happened before. It's probably going to happen again. A person ruled by the Spirit says God is in control. A person ruled by their experience says, man, my, my parents or my spouse, they didn't forgive me. But a person ruled by the Spirit knows that Jesus died on that cross to forgive your sins. All sins. There's a difference. So what do you answer your mind with? Because you will battle with your mind as a Christian. If you haven't done it by now, you will. You just will. You have moments of weakness and doubt. Moments of temptation moments of sickness and and you're just tired of, of fighting and battles and I'm telling you when you're at war you need a time to rest and you're gonna lose some of the battles in the war but this is when we must go to Jesus you must go to him through his word you have to read it to yourself and you know what you may not feel it it may not give you a warm fuzzy or it might give you a warm fuzzy don't look for that God's word is truth. We started off by saying that it was truth. This truth is not to kill you. It's not to embarrass you. But it's to bring you closer to him. It's to make us unshakable. It's to make our, our faith firm so we can stand on him. He is that solid rock. Do you want it? It's easy. It's right here, guys. It is. We battle so much. But you must choose to have your mind controlled by the Spirit if you want to be unshakable. Because if you don't, you're just going to be like a feather in the wind. You'll just be going back and forth. There won't be anything that will keep you firm. But when you choose God and you choose to fill your mind with his word, then you are on the, sh the unshakable rock of Jesus Christ. And with that, there is no defeat. There isn't. There's no pain and suffering. He gives us all things. He answers us and helps us. He guards our minds. Being unshakable, it takes training. You must train your mind to think differently. This is renewing your mind. Romans 12, uh, verses 1 through 2, I didn't put up on the screen, but you can go read that. You must renew your mind by the word of God. When you renew it with something else, man, it's not going to last. I promise you it won't last. But God's word does last. What do you have to lose? Nothing. And you know what you have to gain? Everything. So why not, why not fill your mind with his word? It does take training, which takes time and commitment. But are you worth it? Do you think you're worth it? Because Jesus thought you were worth it. He was born for you and he died for you. So at least one other thinks that you're worth it. So if he thinks you're worth it, the creator of all things, the great I am, then why can't you just say, yes, I'm worth it? This is not going to be a prideful way, but I want you all to repeat after me. I want you all to say it with me three times, I am worth it. Are you ready? Let's say it all together. I am worth it. I am worth it. I am worth it. You're worth it because Jesus died on a cross for you. He came for you. He was born in a manger. He lived for 33 years. He died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. He rose again and then ascended into heaven 40 days later. He then sent his Holy Spirit back down to live inside of us so that we could live like him. So you are worth it to God. So pick this word up and start filling your mind with righteous and holiness, the righteousness and holiness of Jesus Christ. And what will come out is the righteousness and holiness of Jesus Christ. Amen? Are you with me on this, guys? Are you ready to be unshakable? Are you ready? Are you ready for a new life? Are you ready for this 2021 to be better than 2020? How about this? Are you ready for 2021 to be better than the rest of your life has been? then let's give ourselves to the one and only Jesus Christ and let him make you unshakable. Amen? Let's all bow and close out in prayer right now. 
Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus. Lord God, whew, Lord, I know that this was challenging for our minds today, but I thank you, God, that you've given us a mind. Lord, you say you speak in parables and teachings for the people who are ready. So I pray that everyone here will go back, Father, on social media, on YouTube or whatever, and hear the message again and again throughout the week, Lord, to get something inside their minds. I pray, Father, for protection over all of us that are here today. I thank you, God, that no sickness may come in or enter this place and no sickness may leave. I thank you, God, for all the people that are here, the members of the church, Father. I know that there are people that were not able to make it today, Lord, and I just pray for their health. I pray for peace of mind over them and their hearts. I pray for all of our brothers and sisters online all around the world that are watching, Father God. I pray that your light will shine through them. I pray that you will touch them today in their minds, Lord. Help them to be unshakable. Help us, Father God, as we leave this church building today, Lord, that we will shine your light in this dark world. Lord, I know it only comes when we fill ourselves with you and your word. So I truly hope, Father, that people will do that. That they will think that they are worth it. That they will see that they are loved, Father God, and so they will love themselves and feed themselves. Help me, God, to preach the word that you want me to preach. Help me, Father, to put the things out before everyone here that you want them to see and to hear. Help us, Lord, as a church to create this environment where we can experience you, Lord, every single time we get together. I thank you, Father, for all the churches across the world right now today, Lord, that are preaching the gospel. It takes all of us working together, Father, in your kingdom. I pray, Father, for all the preachers, ministers, and pastors that are out there, Lord, giving themselves sacrificially. All the servants that are here at Dayspring and everywhere else that are volunteering their time, Lord, to bring glory to you. We honor you, Father, with our time and with our talents, with our treasures. And I pray, Father God, according to your word, you say that you will honor us for those things. I pray for blessings over them. I thank you, God, for just loving us every day. You're a wonderful God, so worthy of all praise. I thank you, God, that this week, today starts a great week for us. A week where we are truly walking with you and getting stronger in our faith. Help us, Father. Thank you for loving us the way you do. Thank you for our things you do every single day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's give a hand clap to the Lord, everybody. Before the kids get in, I got all the announcements today. Um, so I want to just remind you of some things. Please sign up for our Sunday services. I know that our website is going through some updates. We're actually going to have a meeting tomorrow about it, try to get it fixed um, with the database that's going to help. But uh, if you're not able to sign up online, then send me a text, or you can also send Nadine a text as well. Just do it by Sunday morning. Uh, we just want to make sure that we have enough seats for everybody, but please sign up. Even if you're volunteering, please sign up. Praise and worship, please sign up. If you're a leader in a ministry, remind your people to please sign up. And we just want to make sure we have enough seats for everybody and that we don't overcommit. So please do that. Um, the 30-day faith challenge. Man, this has been very eye-opening and very fulfilling for me. We're only on day 10. So we're reading the Gospel of Mark. Pick up the calendar. You can download it from our website or there's some calendars back there. There's a daily reading, praying, observing it, and applying it to your life. On Thursdays, the rest of this month, every Thursday, we're getting together for about 15 minutes or so, and we're giving praise reports, just words of encouragement to everybody. What we found on the call this past week was that people were, some people were still struggling, of course. Those are going to come up. Other people just had praise reports. But there are going to be times when we're going to need encouragement. And that's what the church is for. Just share and encourage each other. If you want to be a part of that call, then please contact me. I'll send you the Zoom link so you can uh, tune in with the rest of us that are doing this 30-day faith challenge. There's a picture I'd like to show you guys. Let's see if it's up on the screen here, if we're able to get it up, hopefully. Last week, I shared about Alejandro doing his, I guess he's around 270-something days right now consecutive. 
Well, this isn't Alejandro, but this is another one of our youth. J.D., everybody who knows J.D., there he is reading his Bible. Hold on a second. We have two teenagers that are calling out all the adults? Yep. Did I do it on purpose? Absolutely. If two, Yes, praise God. Let's give a hand clap to the Lord for our teens and our youth. If he can do it, looks like he's wrapped in clothes. It might be cold outside. He's got a blanket on him. You can do it in the cold weather today too, guys. You can do it. Are you worth it? Last week was Alejandro. This week was J.D. reading the Bible. Man, brothers and sisters, I, I don't know how to tell you this, but I can't give you everything you need on Sunday mornings for 30 minutes. It, it's not going to be enough. You've got to feed yourself. You've got to. Join this 30-day faith challenge. It's not too late. We're only on day 10 right now. Pick it up and start from day one. Catch up with us. I promise you it's worth it. Reading the gospel of Mark, man, it will change some of the things that you're doing. It'll, there's more miracles. It's the shortest gospel of all of them, but there's more miracles in, those, in, in Mark than it is in the other gospels. In order to be unshakable, you have to get Jesus inside of you. And the way to get Jesus inside of you is to read the gospels. Amen? Join us in this 30-day faith challenge. It is a challenge, and so I'm challenging all the adults in here by showing pictures of youth and talking about our youth. I'm sure I'll have something else again next week. The database is almost full. If you didn't get the yellow handouts, please, guys, I need to fill that out. For We've got this church management software that's coming up. It's going to help us with our events, for our registrations, for our retreats, for membership stuff, to send out email blasts, text messages, your tax in your uh, statements, all the communications coming up, but in order to get that, I need, the, I need the members' database information. So it's your name, address, emails, birth dates, anniversary dates. You want to be able to recognize people on their birth dates, which I know some are coming up this week. And so in order to do that, i got to fill this database up, so I need y'all's information. So if you didn't fill it out, then please, there's some yellow forms on the back table. Um, and if you need it, I can also email it to you. Some people are sending it back through email. For those of you online, please, you're still members of the church, so get in contact with me and I'll send that information to you. But let's do this. Uh, let's, let's get this way. We're about halfway done with what I need so far. Hopefully within the next week we'll get that. Uh, next thing is DS College. I know the announcements are going to go a little long, but I need to talk about this. Not everybody understands what DS College is, DS College of Ministry. I've been talking about it for about four weeks, but, you know, Christmas was in there. People were in the Christmas mood, and they were thinking about the presents that they were going to give me. Maybe they were thinking about the bread I baked for them. I don't know. Some people might have missed some stuff. Let me talk about DS College for just a minute. I know the kids are getting ready to come in. In the future, we'll be picking them up outside as well. Uh, but right now, the uh, DS College, what this is, DS College of Ministry, it's been, the revelation came seven years ago. The Lord showed me very clearly when we were at the other church building that leaders, ministries were going to start, and churches were going to break off and start from day spring. I didn't know what that meant exactly and how that meant it. I didn't. But thank God for this. Can, can God turn something good from something bad? So during this pandemic, eight months of not a whole lot going on, the Lord showed me that before we start that elementary Christian school that is going to be here in a few years, that this was first. The DS College of Ministry is exactly for that. Ministry is serving. So for everybody who's volunteering or wants to volunteer, you got to come to these first few classes. This, the first trimester is going to be on servanthood, what it means to be a servant. You're going to talk about working together as the body of Christ, how to communicate, how to work with other personality types, what your spiritual gifts are. That's going to be in the first trimester. The second trimester is then is going to start focusing more on, on leadership, we got so much coming on leadership. I have certified trainers that teach around the world coming here. I want you to understand something here. One of the people that's coming to speak to us right now, he charges about $500 per person, per person to train. Is that a lot? That's the kind of people that the Lord has brought here at Dayspring Cypress Church. And that's going to be part of the people that are here at DS College. Do you understand what I'm telling you? We, I said I was going to go all out. I'm going to go all in so that we can go all out. I'm going all in to the church this year. I'm pouring into you guys. There are three trimesters in this DS College. The second one is going to be focused on leadership. And then we get into evangelism and outreach. And how do we start using the gifts that God has given us and where do I use it? You might be thinking, man, what is my calling? What are my gifts? What am I here for? I don't know. 
well, go to DS College of Ministry and find out what this is for. If during this process you feel a calling to be a ministry leader, a pastor, an evangelist, an apostle, a teacher, a prophet, if you feel it's going to come out during this session, and so then begins the third trimester, there will be associate pastors credentialed, and eventually there's going to be some ordained through Day Spring Cypress Church here in the near future. It all begins at DS College. Man, I'm excited. I don't know about you guys, but I am excited. There's been 20-something years of experience, of training, of development and leadership stuff that God has placed me in to go. You know that other churches in the past have asked me to come and do things like this for them. This was even before I was a pastor. So what's happening is you guys are getting the benefits of 25 years of what God has allowed me to experience in my life, plus the people who are mentoring me and the people who I look to for help. I don't, know, I don't know if you guys get the grasp and the magnitude of this, but it's huge. Can we show the logo? Can we get the logo on the screen? Look at this. DS College of Ministry. Woo! Yeah! Is this real? This is real. Certificates of completion and graduations. Man, we're going to have graduations along this stage right here. We say, man, but I never graduated before. Well, you're going to graduate now, cap and gown and everything. I'll even play the graduation music for you. We're going to have celebrations this is a big deal, brothers and sisters. The early church, they trained, they learned, they got educated to go out and do the work of Jesus Christ in this world. And that's what DS College of Ministry is going to prepare us to do. Are we excited? It starts on Saturday, this Saturday coming up. You might say, well, I can't be there this Saturday. I got to work. Okay, look, we've got three options. There's no excuses. You got live in person right here. You've got Zoom if you don't feel comfortable being around here, and we're going to have online, meaning if you can't make it that time, you can log in and see the class afterwards. We've removed all the excuses, guys. Come on. Come on. It's time for us to go all out for God, and I'm going to go all in. Guys, I am staying up late. I'm getting, going to sleep. I'm waking up early, staying up late, and I'm pouring everything into these 20 courses that we already have outlined, 20 courses already. Man, this is exciting for me. I know this is a long announcement, but I have to say this because this is all part of what Day Spring is for, here for. Next, last three uh, announcements real quick. The, re- the retreat registration will be posted soon. Just stay tuned for that. We're working on the website for that. Tune into social media. I don't know if you saw that this week, but every day, Day Spring is posting something on social media. We got Testimony Tuesdays. If you have a testimony that you would like to share with the rest of the people, then contact me or Judith, and we'll get that going for you. We have Wednesday night online services where the, I'm having online preachings now. The uh, Bible studies will begin again at some other time, but right now we have online preachings on Wednesday nights at 730s. We have daily devotionals on Mondays and Thursdays, I believe. On Fridays, we have a recap of so many other things that we've been doing, and then Saturday announcements of things that are coming up all on social media Facebook Instagram um, Twitter and then of course on our website guys this there's, there's is ways to be connected if you're looking for motivation more to, for inspiration it's out there and this is something that we are definitely focusing on and then last I want to bring um, I, I want to start praying for our tithes and offerings if you can put that up on the screen I know that people are giving in person I know that people are giving over the internet. We'll praise God for all of that. We're still supporting every ministry and every dollar that comes in is to go out and do the purpose of the kingdom. So let's pray for those things right now. I'm sorry I didn't pray for that earlier, but Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for the people that are giving um, their tithes and offerings, Lord. I thank you, God, that everything that comes in here, Father God, will go out to further your kingdom by strengthening the saints, Father God, by equipping the people, the believers that are here, Lord Jesus, so that we can do the work that you have given us to do. I pray, Father God, that we continue to reach out to the missionaries, Lord God, to the Boys and Girls Country, to the Pregnancy Assistance Center, to FCA, Lord God, and everyone else, the the, uh, Puerto Rican Dream, Lord Jesus. I thank you, God, for all of those ministries that we are supporting and working with. I pray, Father, that everyone that gives, Lord, sacrificially will have more than they need this week. And I thank you, God, for all you're doing. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Let's give a hand clap to the Lord one last time. I realized I went a little long today. I do believe that this is also coming, that a second service is on its way. I know there are people that want to come, and they're not comfortable being around a lot of people. And although we don't have a lot of people here, a second service is coming. So join me in praying for that. I believe there may be a Spanish or bilingual ministry also coming this year starting. Join me in praying for that as well, right? Praise God, right? Praise God.
So let's give, um, we don't have to give a hand clap anymore. Let's just look to somebody else and just say, Jesus loves you and so do I. We'll see you all guys next week. Have a blessed week and we'll see you all. God bless. Amen.